researchers at Tufts University have been studying the connection between air pollution and cardiac health in communities near highways for the past five years. Reporter Jeanette Orihel takes us inside the monitoring truck tracking the air quality in Union Square recently. Air pollution is a big problem in major cities, but places like Somerville also deal with pollution due to nearby highway traffic. The cities that have the most highway traffic uh, and the most motor vehicle traffic, um, and those are Somerville and Chelsea, and they also have the most immigrants and the most population density. They had by far the most excess heart attack and lung cancer deaths. Wig Zamor is a Somerville resident and local environmental health researcher. He says those living within 100 meters of a highway or high traffic area have a 50% or greater chance of dying of a heart disease or lung cancer. Children are also more likely to have asthma and the risk for autism rises above 50%. Zaymor says his intention is not to scare residents with these alarming numbers, but rather make them aware of the need for action. We only do this because we think we can make it better by, by paying attention to it. We don't do it to, to scare people. That, that, would, that wouldn't help anybody. But, but we do think that we can design our communities as they evolve to be a little healthier, and that's why we do it. As part of the effort to improve air quality in Somerville and surrounding cities, Tufts University and community partners created the Community Assessment of Freeway Exposure in a Health Study, or CAFE study, in 2008. They have been studying pollution in Boston communities near major highways. They have done research in neighborhoods close to I-93, Mass Pike, and the McGrath and O'Brien highways. Today, CAFE serves as the larger umbrella for five community-based research projects studying air pollution. The latest research project was stationed in Union Square and focused on improving the health of near highway communities. Doctoral researcher at Tufts University Matthew Simon oversaw the three-week project. Union Square, uh, it was sort of a, an interest by the city. They wanted to kind of see, uh, you know, a lot of stuff goes on in the square here with events and the farmer's market and things like that. So there are going to be a lot of people in this area and so they just wanted to kind of get a background measurement of, of what kind of pollution they might be exposed to. The air monitoring truck serves as a lab on wheels equipped with multiple air testing apparatus. The first here is a particle counter and what this is doing is actually counting individual particles in the atmosphere and so we're measuring that uh, on a 30 second basis. This instrument does the same exact thing. Uh, what I'm doing is just sort of a co-location uh, check just to make sure that we're reading similar concentrations uh, with both instruments so it just increases our, our accuracy. Uh, this here is measuring polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons which are a type of particle in the atmosphere typically from exhaust fumes, uh, combustion byproducts and so these can be particularly dangerous uh, they can be mutagenic or carcinogenic and so we're just measuring those concentrations as well. This instrument here is our athelometer, which measures black carbon, or also uh, soot or diesel particulates. So again, another particle counter in, in a sense. This little guy is our side pack, which is measuring PM 2.5. And so that's just looking at particles size 2.5 microns in diameter and smaller. The research vehicle also features a weather unit station measuring the local weather conditions. This is, um uh, an issue that's not very well understood by a lot of people. When, when uh, environmental protection agencies started in 1970, they actually focused on these kinds of things, but they, they made some quick progress by taking lead out of gasoline. That was really important, and um, they got some of the engines a little cleaner. But the last 30 years, they've mostly focused on the regional pollution, and they forgot about the people who are really next to these high levels of traffic or ships or airports or trains. Making those who live near highways more aware of where air pollution is and where the patterns are around their neighborhoods gives residents the information they need to take action against air pollution. Because for most adults, the exposures they get are, are mostly inside. In the past, researchers working with Tufts and CAFE have done studies to test air filtration units inside residents' homes to determine a connection between highway proximity and health risks and illnesses related to pollution. Due to that research, they found levels of ultra-fine particles found in diesel exhaust were drastically elevated near highways. 
They also found low-income and minority populations who are not able to afford living further from the city were disproportionately affected. In Somerville, the project hopes to influence the creation of municipal policies that will reduce the exposure to ultrafine particles near highways. The thing with all the air pollution is a lot of it really depends on the wind conditions. And so, as you can see, looking out on the street here, there's a lot of vehicle traffic. So when the wind is coming from that direction, I would expect there to be a lot higher concentrations of, of all these pollutants. Um, but when the wind is coming from another direction, say more from the center of the square, they might be a little bit lower. Again, it depends on um, if there's an event going on and, and what they're doing in the event or the restaurants, uh, you know, if they're cooking right now or not. Tufts University and its partners in the study are currently reviewing the most recent data collection. The findings will be presented to the city to support plans for air quality improvements in and around Union Square, as well as other neighborhoods affected by the highway pollution. For Somerville Neighborhood News, I'm Jeanette Origen.